and welcome back once again. We're moving forward. We're going to chapter 10. What are we going to talk about? Something we can never get away from. We're going to talk about real estate taxes and other types of liens that can be against your property. Okay. Will we have more definitions? Can you take a guess? Yes, you will. Oh, let's see. We're going to talk about liens. Liens is a charge or a claim against a specific property made to enforce payment of money, a debt. It represents only an interest in the property. It does not constitute ownership. It's an encumbrance. We talked about encumbrances before. It does not necessarily prevent the transfer or conveyance of the property, but liens go with the property. Liens do not go with the individual. So would you buy a piece of property with a lien on it? Let's stop and think. I don't think so. Well, guess what? Almost every property owner has bought a property with a lien on it. Not necessarily their mortgage lien. That comes on and gets put on after you close. But what about real estate tax liens? Real estate taxes, they come with the property. Congratulations. Okay, so we all do get properties with a lien on it. And let's take a look at the different types of liens we have. First type of lien we're going to talk about is voluntary. It's created intentionally by the property owner, such as a mortgage lien. When you took out a mortgage loan against your property, the lender put a lien on your property to guarantee payment. Nobody stood but with a gun to your head making you sign those documents. You did it voluntarily. Now, on the other hand, another type of lien is involuntarily. Those real, the real estate tax lien you have against your property, do you really want them? Or did they come with the property? Congratulations, you have now real estate taxes, taxes due. They're involuntary. And then you can go a little bit further, and it can be a statutory lien created by law. So it could be a voluntary statutory lien, or it could be an involuntary statutory lien. And it could be equitable lien, where it basically goes against the equity portion of the property. Like if I file a judgment against you, that's a general involuntary equitable lien. Okay? We're going to move on, and we're going to talk about a couple things that I possibly brushed through briefly earlier. we talk about general liens specifically. General, like a general warranty deed, general agent, you do more than one thing. Well, a general lien will affect more than one type of property. A general lien will go against both your real and your personal property. And in Illinois, if you're going to file a lien against somebody, like a judgment, a judgment is a general lien. You have to file it in the county where the property is located. So if I own property here in Cook County and then also in Lake County, and you want to file a judgment against me, well, and you want to file it against all my real and personal property, you have to file it in Cook and in Lake. Generally, it goes against both. Specifically, and it's specific to a parcel of property. Specific, starts with the S, single, severity. You own it yourself. If you're a special agent, you're doing one thing for somebody, correct? Special warranty deed, which will be talked about throughout this course. Basically, it's only during the time you own the property. Special, specific. It's secured by and affects only one specific parcel of real estate. Your real estate taxes, that's a specific lien. That's a specific involuntary lien, because you didn't volunteer to get those taxes on. Your mortgage loan, that's a specific voluntary lien. Okay, now let's take a look at special assessments for a minute. Special assessments are a form, another form of taxes. The entire neighborhood can petition for the village to put in brand new sidewalks or street lights. And then the village specially assesses each property owner. Well, since the owners petition for those new sidewalks and street lights, that's a voluntary specific lane, okay? Now, if they just came in and put brand new street lights on and then they basically assessed every owner, that would be involuntary specific. 
So things to try to help you learn some of these. Now what kind of an effect does liens have on a title to a property? Well, I already said a lien does not prevent the owner from conveying title. But if you took a property of mine, let's say I sold you my property, but it had not only the tax lien, but it had a $50,000 lien. And you took it with that $50,000 lien. Are you going to pay me $50,000 less for my property? Yeah, it's going to reduce the value of my property. Okay, liens go with the property, not the property owner. We all buy pro real property. When, when we buy it, we automatically get real estate taxes. And that's one thing we never get away from, okay? Taxes. Priority of lien. So, okay, you have all these liens on a property, so who gets paid first? Can you take a guess who's going to get paid first all the time? Well, I'll tell you one thing. All the time, real estate taxes will get paid first. Real estate taxes are not required to be recorded to be paid first. And again, special assessments are another form of real estate taxes, so they'll get paid first. But all your other liens will take priority based on the date they are recorded in public records in the county where the property is located. First in time for recording is first in line for payment. In Illinois, the real estate taxes always take first priority. A mechanics lien, if timely recorded, may at times displace previously recorded liens, but never, ever, ever real estate liens. Never. Now we're going to talk about a new word. Oh, you've had enough new words in this course, right? New definition. A subordination agreement. The holder of a superior or prior lien agrees to permit a junior lien holder's interest to move ahead of his or her lien. So you and I run into each other at the grocery store this weekend. I'm standing in line. You're in line ahead of me. You allow me to cut ahead of you, even though you were in line first. You subordinated to me. So we have a subordination agreement. You have two mortgages on the property. Mortgage number one was the first mortgage, recorded first. Mortgage number two, recorded second. Okay? Lender two forecloses on the property, not lender one. And both lenders were not paid by the owner. Why would lender two foreclose on the property? Because they probably had a subordination agreement with lender one that allowed them to move ahead of lender one. So a subordination agreement, a cut in line. Real, real estate tax liens. It's called the general tax. It's ad valorem tax. It's according to value. Your taxes are based according to the value of the property. Maybe a property in Barrington, well, a property in Barrington possibly will have a higher, higher taxes on it than the property in Franklin Park, et cetera, et cetera. Exemptions of variety properties are permanently or temporarily exempt from imposition of real estate taxes. There are some exemptions. So be aware, some people don't have to pay real estate taxes. If it was used as a religious organization, they're exempt from real estate taxes. But if you're selling a home to a buyer for residential use and it was owned by a clergy and shows zero taxes, you better make sure your buyer knows that there's going to be taxes when they move in. Now, do we pay our taxes based on the value of your property or do we pay it based on the assessed value of the property? Well, you don't want to pay it based on the value of your property, honestly. Real estate is valued for tax purposes by the county and township assessor, and the valuation process is called an assessment. Taxes are not, not, not based on market value, but they're based on the assessed value. Please remember that. Why? Because usually the assessed value is probably a third of the actual market value, and you're not going to want to pay taxes on the real market value of your property. In Illinois, all counties except Cook, which is oddball, real property is assessed at 33 and a third percent of the fair market value. So if you own in DuPage, Lake, Grundy County, all your counties are assessed at 33 and a third percent except Cook County. 
And depending on how property is classified, basically in Cook County, it's on a sliding scale between 16 and 38%. Cook County is never easy. The Illinois Revenue Act defines real property as land, buildings, structures, improvements, and any other permanent fixtures to land. And that's what they're going to assess us on. They use a basically a equalization factor is used for inequalities in assessments. An equalization factor may be applied to raise or lower the assessment cost of a particular district or county. Tax rate. Tax rate is realistically the process of arriving at the real estate tax rate that begins with the adoption of the budget by each taxing district. One town can have higher taxes than another town. One county can have higher taxes than another county. Tax bill is computed by applying the tax rate to the assessed value. In Illinois, general real estate taxes are levied annually for the calendar year and become a prior first lien, superior to all other liens on Happy New Year, January 1st. Okay, in Illinois, we pay taxes in arrears. But January 1st, let's say January 1st, 2017, the taxes for January 1st, 2017 become a lien against your property, even though they will not be due until 2018. Taxes are not due and payable until the following year. There's different states in throughout our country where the taxes are prepaid. In Illinois, we pay them behind time, in arrears. When a property owner fails to pay their taxes on real estate, well, the property may ultimately be sold at an annual tax sale, forfeiture sale, or scavenger sale. It can be paid for delinquent taxes. You don't want that. And if your lender's paying the taxes, you want to make sure your lender pays the taxes on the right tax ID number. I already told you, special assessments are also known as improvement taxes. They're another form of real estate tax taxes. They're levied on real estate to fund public improvements to the property. They're specific and statutory by law, but they can be, as I explained, voluntary or involuntary. Each property in the improvement district will pay a prorated share of the total amount of assessment. When you list a property, you want to find out, do the owners have any special assessments that still need to be paid? A buyer may not be willing to take their property subject to the special assessment. It might be a negotiating factor, it's something you will need to know. Things to remember, taxes are always calculated based on the assessed value, not the market value. When calculating taxes, always multiply, 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 and yet lest you see the word per. Per means a divide, okay? In a math question, if it is asking you for the monthly class, monthly taxes, sorry, please do not stop at the annual Continue on and divide the annual by 12. I guarantee you 100% that at least 50% of you, if a question is asking for the monthly taxes, 50% of you will stop at the annual because one of your answers there, A, B, C, or D, is an annual answer. Be cautious on your math questions to follow them all the way through. Okay, follow them all the way through. You're going to take the assessed value, the market value, times it by the assessed value, times it by the tax rate. But one time or so, every so often, you may run into the tax rate as being a mill. That will freeze your brain up. You say, what the heck is a mill? Well, just remember, one mill is one one thousandth of a dollar. So if it says the tax rate is 30 mills, you're going to take 30, divide it by 1,000, which should give you 0 0.03. So you're gonna take the assessed value, multiply it by that 0 0.03, okay? So remember that. Those are things to recall. Special service area, SSAs. You may happen to see that, maybe. They're special taxing districts. If you're going into the commercial real estate, you may see that a lot more often. They're established by ordinance, often by developers in order to pass the cost of the streets, landscaping, waterline, sewers to the homeowners who reside in that area. Special service areas, be familiar what it is. What other kind of liens can you have on your property? Your mortgage lien. 
I told you, it's something voluntary, right? Basically, it's a lien. You give the lender a security agreement so they can put a lien on your property to guarantee you're going to pay it. If you don't pay it, they can foreclose on your property, correct? Just like if you don't make your car payment, can they repossess your car? Yes, because they have the contract on your car. What other type of liens? Mechanics lien. Those are specific, involuntary, that give security to the people or companies that perform labor on your property or furnish materials. To be entitled to a mechanics lien in Illinois, the person who did the work must have had a contract. It could have been implied, could be expressed with the owner or the owner's authorized representative. Well, you may have paid the general contractor, but did you read all the fine print? Did they pay the subcontractors? The subcontractors can file a mechanics lien on your property. Read the contracts. Mechanics lien can take priority over a previously recorded lien if the work was done to enhance the value of the property. The lien will attach as of the date when the work was ordered and the owner signed the contract. The date of the attachment establishes the lien's priority over other liens. So be aware, if somebody is listing a property and they just finished a family room on it, family room addition, well, they could ha possibly have a mechanics lien. The contractor's lien right will expire two years after completion of that work. So after two years, they no longer have the right to file the lien unless he or she files suit within that time to foreclose the lien. The suit can force the sale of the property and provide funds to pay the claimant's lien. So be familiar a little bit about the mechanics lien. A judgment, a judgment is a general lien. It goes against all real and personal property. It's an order issued by a court that finally settled and defines the rights, obligations of a party to a lawsuit. If you don't pay somebody, can they sue you for the payment? If you don't pay hospital bills, can they file a judgment against you? Yes. And they can file against real and personal property. And a judgment will last for seven years on your property. Or if you file a judgment, it will last seven years unless you go to renew it. If you want that judgment to be renewed, you have to file it all over again. In Illinois, a judgment becomes a general lien on all the defendant's real and personal property in the county at the, at the time the judgment was recorded. Judgment liens are effective for seven years and may be renewed for another seven years. Unless it's a government judgment lien, well, then it's going to be there forever. Forever. Even bankruptcy won't wipe it off. Sorry. So, a couple new definitions we're going to learn now. We're going to talk about a list pendants, list pendants. When they search title, when you're buying a piece of property, they're going to do a title search if you're getting a title policy. The title company is going to do a title search. The lender wants a title policy if you're taking out a loan. They're going to search for any possible liens or change of ownership rights against the seller and against the buyer. Okay, they're going to search for list pendants, possible litigation against a property or an individual. So if you're in the process of being sued by somebody, it's going to pop up when they search the title. An attachment is a writ authorizing the court to retain custody of the property until a lawsuit is settled. Okay, let's stop and think. You're in the middle of suing Roseanne for something, okay? Or suing your neighbor. Now your neighbor puts up a for sale sign. They own a couple other investment properties in the neighborhood. They're, they're trying to liquidate and skip town. Well, you can go to court and file a writ of attachment. And if the court basically gives you that writ of attachment, that means the court will take custody of the property until your lawsuit has been settled. Okay? Other type of liens could be federal estate taxes and state inheritance taxes. Things you get when somebody dies. They're general statutory involuntary liens that encumber a deceased person's real and personal property. So it depends on how much you inherit. When somebody sells their home in many subdivisions today in many towns, there's liens for municipal utilities. So when you sell your home, you have to prove that the current water bill is paid up to date. 
A lien for municipal utility is a specific, it's against a specific property. It's equitable, it goes against the equity portion. It's involuntary, okay? A bail bond lien. Okay, you got picked up, you had a bad night, you got picked up, now you're in jail. So you have to post bail. What do you think? Do you think that's a voluntary or involuntary lien? What do you think? Well, you have to post bail. You're the one who calls the bail bonds person, or somebody does. It's voluntary. It creates a specific statutory voluntary lien against your property. Oh. Corporation franchise tax lien. A corporation franchise tax on corporations as a condition for allowing them to do business in the state. A general statutory involuntary lien on all real and personal property owned by the corporation they may have. And we're going to talk about one you might be quite familiar with. Hmm. IRS tax lien. We talked about real estate tax liens, right? They take priority over all other liens, correct? They do not have to be recorded to get paid, right? And you didn't pay Uncle Sam last April 15th. So they file a lien against you. Well, their lien becomes a general, statutory, involuntary lien on all your real and personal property. Now, sorry, Uncle Sam, the Internal Revenue Service must take their place in line for recording. If they recorded the lien June 1st, 2017, well, all liens recorded prior to that date will get paid before IRS will get paid. Most students think IRS comes first. Oh, IRS, they get first. No, they take their place in line for payment. Okay, they take their place in line for payment. Now, many of you may be going into residential real estate. Many of you may be going into commercial, industrial, property management. Well, there's one more lane, especially if you're going to the commercial end of real estate, I want you to be aware of. In Illinois, we have the Commercial Real Estate Brokerage Lien Act. That commits the commercial sponsoring broker to place a lien on property in the amount of commission they're entitled to receive under a contract in the sale or lease of property. Okay? In the event they are not paid for their services. Please remember, this lien applies only to commercial property and must be recorded to be enforceable. A company that deals in residential real estate, your sponsoring broker cannot file a lien to guarantee you're gonna get paid your commission. Nope, if they don't get paid, they can go and sue the seller, but only commercial brokers, based on the Commercial Broker Lien Act, can file the lien, and it has to be recorded to be enforceable. So that's our chapter on debts, on liens, on all things that can come against you that you have to pay. So take a break, let's move on. We'll see you in a few minutes.